Have you been told that there's not enough time to change your grips at the net when you're hitting a forehand and backhand volley, that you're supposed to come to the net in a continental and that's the one grip you use? And because you don't have enough time, we just use this one grip. Have you been told that? Well, guess what? It's not true. It's absolutely a falsehood. I'm not saying that the person who told you that was lying, but I am telling you it ain't true. And I'm sorry, USPTA, I'm a dues paying member <laughs> of the USPTA for decades. I am not gonna teach that crap. And the reason is because it's simply not true. When you watch the pros, by the way, when the pros come to the net, they do not use a continental grip on the volley. And you coaches know exactly what I'm talking about. They don't use a continental grip. And I mean the continental grip like on your serve. They are just slightly over from a continental. Think halfway between a continental and an Eastern forehand. They're in between the two. And what does that produce, by the way? It produces a forehand volley that goes forward and a backhand volley that is chopped. Is that how you volley? Do you volley forward on your forehand and down on your backhand volley? It's because of the one grip system. If you use a grip system that allows you to change the grip between forehand volley and backhand volley, your backhand volley can look just like your forehand volley because now the racket face matches the same as a forehand. So I actually don't want you to use a continental grip on either forehand or backhand. I want you to be just to the side of it on the forehand and just on the other side of it on your backhand volley. What it does in the benefit it gives you is no different than the, the benefit you get from changing your grip from the baseline. What if I were to give you a lesson out here right now and you and I were rallying and you got a semi-western grip on your forehand and then you change the grip to hit your backhand. I said, you know what? Just make it easier. Just use one grip on both sides. Don't change your grip. I mean, it's so much easier just to use one grip. You said, but Ryan, I don't care if it's easier. I want it to be beneficial. I actually want it to enhance my game. That's the benefit that comes from changing your grip. Now, then the question is, how long does it take to change the grip? We're about to find out. I'm gonna hit some volleys on the ball machine, and we're gonna see how long it takes for me to shift my grip from just slightly to the right of a continental to just slightly to the left of a continental. Think of all the corner between an Eastern backhand and a continental for my backhand grip. It's not a full Eastern backhand. It's in between a continental, the serve grip, and the one-hander's backhand, the Eastern backhand. We're gonna see how long it takes for me to go to one side of the continental to the other side of the continental to actually find out, do I have this amount of time while I'm playing? Here's what you'll notice when I do this. I will finish the grip change before I even put my racket in the way of the ball. If I don't have time to put my racket in the way of the ball, I'm gonna lose the point anyway. Who cares about the grip change? So I'm gonna hit some backhand volleys and we're gonna see how long it takes me to change my grip from a forehand grip to a backhand grip. All right, so let's see how long it actually takes for me to change the grip. So here I am with the split step. Let's look at my hand very carefully. Let's look to see when I start changing my grip. So I'm starting the grip change right now. That's really the grip change. So let's see how long it takes. All right, well, I've already changed my grip. The grip change has already occurred. I'm done with the grip change. And let's just say it's 0.16 seconds. So it's one, it's 0.16 seconds for me to change the grip, but for the ball to get to me, <laughs> 0.68. It takes a lot less time to change the grip than it does to set your racket in the way of the ball and make contact. But let's look at actual double situations when you might actually not have enough time to change the grip. So this point is USC versus Stanford, and we're going to pay close attention to this net player, the player who's crouching. And I want you to watch him make this volley. In fact, by the way, notice he hits a two-handed backhand volley. <laughs> I thought that was old school, right? I thought he wasn't supposed to do that. I'm a big fan of the two-handed backhand volley. All right, so check this out. Right about now, his brain is noticing where the ball is going. We can see that from the racket. So I'm going to start the timer right... I'm going to start the timer right there. That's when his brain is actually recognizing where the ball is going. So that's when the grip change would actually begin. So remember... Uh, 0.16 seconds 
is how long it'll take to change your grip. So let's go to 0.16 seconds. Oh, there it is. So it takes less time if your opponent's at the baseline and you're at the net. He would have already changed his grip if he was going to be someone who changed the grip on the backhand. And then let's see how long it takes for him to actually make contact. 0.36 seconds. He has twice as much time needed in this situation. So he could change his grip twice in this amount of time. And then he puts this ball. I'm not saying he did change his grip, but again, the argument is that you don't have enough time to change the grip. All right, well, in this situation, when your opponent's at the baseline, you have plenty of time to change your grip. So then let's watch this point, and specifically this player at the net. Watch him slam this ball. So let's watch. This is what people talk about. That right there, right? So people say, yeah, but what if you're playing doubles, and you're this guy, and you get slammed with the ball? Okay, well, let's do that. So he's getting crushed with this ball. Do you think he has enough time to change his grip? Absolutely not. If you don't have enough time to change your grip, then you're not even going to touch the ball. So this argument that you don't have enough time to change your grip, yet that's the reason why we're going to use a one grip system, it just makes no sense. When you change the grip, it helps get your racket face square against the back of the ball. If we just look at this player's racket, watch how his racket actually guesses the forehand first. Look how the racket goes to the forehand first, and then he sees the ball going to the backhand. So let's start the timer right there. Let's start the timer here, and let's see one point uh, one six seconds. So the ball actually goes by him at point two. Did this player have enough time to change his grip? Well, theoretically, yes, because it's point two and he only needs point one six. But really, we'll say no. If you don't have enough time to change your grip, you won't even hit the ball, right? If you don't have a truly enough time to change your grip. Remember, the whole reason why grip changes help you at the net is it helps square up the racket face against the back of the ball. Because I changed my grip, to just on the other side of a continental. Think between a continental and a one-hander's backhand, like an eastern topspin backhand grip. You're halfway between that. What it does is it really squares up the racket and gets your strings to be flat against the back of the ball. I'm not going to be chopping down from high to low as I hit. I'm going to be hitting through this volley. Why? Because I changed my grip. And 95% of the time, you have plenty of time to change your grip. Now, if you're looking for more people in your local area to compete against, practice with, or even find a coach who's close to you, use my link in the description, playyourcourt.com slash two minute tennis. They are an amazing website that pairs you up with evenly matched people in your local area. Use my link in the description and you get 50% off when you join. You don't have to listen to conventional wisdom, especially when it doesn't even make sense. I think this idea that going to the net is a one grip system and it's a one grip idea, it's been passed down and said so many times that people just accept it to be true. But Vic Braden, 60 years ago, proved that this is simply not the case. You have plenty of time to change your grip 95% of the time. And that one time when you're playing doubles and the ball is just crushed at you, you're not gonna win that point anyway. So if that's your thinking, if that's the only reason why you wanna stick with your one grip system, look, don't listen to conventional wisdom. Don't use a continental grip on either volley because the pros don't use a continental grip on their forehand volley, they're just to the side of it. Learn to change the grip and go to the other side of a continental. And as you saw, you have plenty of time to do so. You learn the two grip system when you're at the net on your forehand and backhand volley and there is no doubt you're going to gain confidence, win more matches and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2minutetennis.net. I can't rate I cannot wait to read the comments by the way. You got this.